Hi, this video is part of a build log series where I'm making motorized shoes that you would wear when you play a VR game. Here's one of the motorized shoes. The shoes would keep you in the same spot in the real world as you walk around and turn in any direction in the VR game. In the last video, I said that I was going to make stronger Omni wheels because the Omni wheels I had before were breaking. Here's one of the stronger Omni wheels, but that has changed. I was finally, after searching many times, able to find Omni wheels online that could be used for this application. They're small and they can handle a lot of load and they're cheap. I really wish I would have found these earlier. I could have saved a lot of time, but you don't know what you don't know and it's okay to make mistakes. So I had a bunch of footage with these Omni wheels and parts made for, with these Omni wheels, but I scrapped all that. I put those parts in a box because I'm gonna try it out with these Omni wheels. These are wheels I can just buy. It makes the build a lot easier if I can just use these. Here's a close up of the shoe as it is right now. These three wheels here are for forward and back motion. These six wheels are for side to side motion. If you combine them, you can go at diagonals. Here is the wheel that I bought. It's a Rotocaster wheel from a company in Australia. This little guy can handle 30 kilograms of weight. Uh, the maximum load capacity is that, which is about 66 pounds. It's 50 millimeters or about two inches in diameter. And it's about one inch wide. And it's only about $10 for each one of these. So I'm really, I'm really excited that I found these. Better late than never. Here is the Omni wheel that I designed and yeah, uh, it could work, but like I said, it's just easier to use Omni wheels that I can buy. It'll make the build easier. If any of you want to build this thing, it'll make it much easier. Now I'm going to do some testing and we're going to see how well these wheels and this layout works. Okay, so I'm going to first start by just leaving the power off and just move my foot around. And it's, it's really easy to move my foot around. The wheels don't provide any resistance. So that's really good. I'm gonna plug it in now. So when I tested this before, what happened was the forward and back motion, it skid a bit. And it's, it still was able to move me, but it was doing some skidding. I didn't like that. The side to side motion was perfect. So we're gonna see if that happens again this time. First, I'm gonna do forward and back motion. I'm just gonna put a little bit of weight on my foot. Okay. I'm gonna put all my weight on my, my foot now. So I'm off the ground. You can see there it struggled a bit in the beginning, but it was able to eventually move me back. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift my foot a little bit back further so that my weight is more over those back wheels. I think the reason the skidding is happening is because I'm shifting my weight forward and back between uh, the front of my foot and the back of my foot. So when this thing starts going to catch my balance, I'm going forward a little bit like that. So I'm, you know, I'm catching my balance. So when I go forward like, like that, uh, now the, the, the back wheels don't have as much weight pushing them into the ground, so they skid a bit. I'm going to try to keep my weight back the whole time. Okay, that, that was a little better. Now I'm going to show one more test I did. When these shoes are being used for real, it, they're going to bring my foot back, but I'm going to help them a little because my my leg naturally want, wants to come back when I walk. So I'm bringing my foot back, I'm bringing my foot back. So my leg is using a little bit of its energy to, to bring itself back. So it's actually helping the shoe a bit. So I'm gonna mimic that kind of motion right now. So that's very easy to do. The wheels are working great. There's no friction. And the shoes do help me come back a little bit. They're still skidding when I when I do 
when I do that motion. So forward and back is not great, but it works. Now let's do side to side. I'm gonna have all my weight on it. And it had no problem moving me right away. No skidding whatsoever. So that's the testing. I think I'm close. I think this is close to working. The side to side motion worked just uh, perfectly. I couldn't have asked for any more, but the forward and back motion, it, it did work. Um, it could work, but it did skid a bit. And heavier people than me will want to use this kind of thing. So it might skid more for them. So I need to look into why the forward and back motion skids. I'm thinking that the side to side motion works so well because for one, there's six wheels. There's only three wheels for forward and back. Uh, the more wheels, the more traction that they can get on the ground. Second, these wheels, the side to side ones, are distributed along the length of the shoe. There's two wheels back here, there's two wheels back here, there's two wheels over here. They're along the whole length of the shoe, so no matter how I'm leaning on my foot, if I'm leaning on the ball of my foot, if I'm leaning on the heel, there's still wheels on the front and back, wherever I'm leaning, that uh, will take a good amount of the weight and be pushed into the ground and should get traction. With the forward and back wheels here, if I lean forward over here on the on um, the ball of my foot, then these wheels, they might not begin enough traction at all because most of the weight is over here, but these need to be pushed into the ground. So I'm thinking I need to redo this layout. I need to move these parts around so that for the forward and back motion, I can do what I did here. So one is to have more wheels. So th there's six wheels here. I want more wheels uh, for the forward and back motion. And then, and then two is I want to distribute the forward and back wheels along the whole length. I want them to be along the whole length so that no matter where I'm leaning, no matter where the weight of my foot is, there's gonna be wheels for forward and back motion that will be pushed into the ground and that will get traction and will work. One other thing too, is that these wheels are the um, Rotocaster wheels that have the highest uh, weight capacity. And the reason they have the highest weight capacity is because these rollers here, they're just made out of normal plastic, a hard rigid plastic. So they don't have really good traction in and of themselves. You saw with the side to side motion, it didn't matter. So I think these wheels can work regardless, but the size down from these, so, uh, these have 30 kilograms load capacity. The size down that has 25 kilograms load capacity, they have rubber rollers and those will get, have better traction. Those will grip the floor better. So I've ordered those and I'm gonna use those too. So that'll help a little bit, but I really think that using more wheels for forward and back and distributing them along the whole length is the key. By the way, you may have noticed the wheels were a bit loud during the testing. If you have any ideas on how I can make them quieter, let me know in a comment or join the Discord. Link in the description. Now, I mentioned I need to redo the layout for the shoe. Here is the new layout that I came up with. I said I wanted to distribute the forward and back wheels across the whole length. I was able to do that. And also the sideways wheels are still distributed along the whole length. And I wanted to have more wheels for forward and back. So before there were just three, now there are five. And um, side to side also has five. So the two big things that I think helped with the side to side motion in my testing. I repeated that for the forward and back. And um, yeah, this is what it looks like. Here's one motor and it goes to all the wheels here. And then this motor is here and has the gearbox and then just rotates this one axle. And that's what it looks like. So this is the next layout that I'm going to try out and I really hope it works. By the way, thanks for watching my video. If you want to, it helps out to leave a like and subscribe. For the noise issue, I think it's a software problem. If I run this thing through my Android app and the Arduino, it starts off choppy and then it is okay. See there it was, it's choppy. But if I run it through the app that is used to configure the VEC, it sounds much better. So it's not a hardware problem, this seems fine. 
it's a software problem and I'll deal with it later. Okay, here's the new layout I'll put together. As you can see, the only difference is that there's only four wheels for the side to side motion because I didn't account for uh, these wires running through there. They took up a little bit more room than I expected. So I couldn't put a wheel right here. Otherwise the wheel would rub on the wires. So I just have four on the side, but I think it should be okay. Okay, here we go. So no power. Feels just fine. Okay, power's on. All right, put my whole weight on it. But no, this totally works. Uh, there's no, I, I can't feel any skidding or anything or skipping. Okay, let's do, mimic the actual motion the shoe will take again, like I did last time. When I do that motion, I'm first on my heel, and then as my foot comes back, I'm transferring to the ball of my foot. So my weight is transferring all along the shoe, but it's still, it's still performing really well. All right, uh, let's do side to side motion now. All my weight. Whoa. Yeah, that feels good. So side to side motion seems to work pretty well too. So I'm excited. I'm cautiously optimistic that this is pretty much it. I think these red roller Omni wheels worked a little better because these, um, the red rollers, they have more traction than with the, uh, the black rollers. So that was great. Um, I think they work well. And I think this is pretty much it. It's, this is the hard part for me, the hardware part. There's a few software things to work out that we discussed, but software is my bread and butter, so I'm not worried about that. And I need to figure out how I can route the wires differently so that I can have a wheel or two right here to get a, even a better traction. But I, yeah, I'm excited. So the next step is to put the binding on. If you're new here, I haven't mentioned the binding in a while, but when you use these things, you don't lift this whole thing up off the ground when you take a step. No, there's a binding that straps to your foot. This thing just rolls along the ground following your foot. So it's much easier that this thing actually weighs a little bit, but you don't have to lift it up. You just have to roll it along. And I redesigned the binding from last time. I moved the pivot point to somewhere uh, that makes more sense. And next time in the next video, I'll show you guys that. And then after that, I can finally make a second shoe and I can really test this out and I can really get going and maybe play some VR games eventually. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe. I know this was a long one, but there was a lot to cover and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.